Hi, I'm Lydia Dedal and I'm here with Artem Lobov, UFC fighter. Thank you for taking the time for uh, speaking to us today. I know you're it's very my busy. Pleasure. You're in the middle Thank of fight camp. You're welcome. Um, next fight, February 6th. Yep. UFC 196 against yep. Alex Weiss. Yep. So you're obviously well in the middle of fight camp. Yeah, I mean, we always say this. We don't really do fight camps. You know, this is like a, a known fact. I think at this stage at Straight Bus Gym, you know, we just train. It's not even training anymore. It's just lifestyle. You know, mm -hmm. this is my not even job. This is just my life. That's how I live my life. You know, I just wake up and I, you know, go training and, you know, eat, go chat with the guys from training, mm -hmm. back training. That's that's just my life now. There is no camp. Perfect. Good stuff. Um, does anything change for your fights? You know, obviously, newly signed UFC contract. You know, how does the, the, the training differ or does it? Uh, not really, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's always the same. You know, you always... Uh, work on everything, you know, striking, grappling, obviously, you know, different opponent, you might have a look a little bit at their mm -hmm. uh, game plan and what they do, but you shouldn't really concentrate too much on it, I felt in my last fight, that's exactly what I did, you know, I kind of was a little bit too worried about what he was going to do, and then I did, was able to defend all his submissions, but I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do, so uh, this is something that I'm going to change in this fight and just go back to the, my usual just get in there and you know impose my game plan on them and obviously your last fight was against very tough opponents mm. um, Ryan Hall in the tough finale and um, for anyone that doesn't know uh, Artem was in The Ultimate Fighter uh, which is a reality TV show um, by the UFC um, so basically tell people that might not know about the process you know what's involved with tough yeah The Ultimate Fighter I mean they it's kind of like you know to keep it simple like sort of like a big brother house you know yeah. where you have a bunch of people living in the same house there's no access to uh, any sort of media no phones no tvs no nothing you just uh, um, you know train and uh, and you fight and it's like a tournament you know so if you lose you're then out of the tournament if you win you advance and then uh, it goes up all the way till the final and then the final is live mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it was a good experience, you know, it was uh, some of the seasons were, you know, some seasons kind of have a bit more drama in the house, uh, whereas our season was really, really good. I enjoyed it because it was more about the fights, you know, mm -hmm. training and fighting. And then if you watch it, you'll see yourself. They show very little of the um, our interactions in the house because, you know, it was just normal, you know, just fighters, professionals living together. We kept it, you know, strictly business for most of the time. And, uh, yeah any differences or dislikes we had we settled it in uh, in the cage so and it's kind of part of it that, you know if you want to become a pro fighter then it's part and parcel of that you know the media obligations that go with this how do you find you know doing stuff like this interviews and yeah i mean i, ha I had a good uh, kind of exposure to it in terms of um you know obviously i was uh, you know with connor on many of mm -hmm. his uh, uh media tours uh, so i i saw that side so I knew exactly what it involves, you know, and, and, and now also having seen how much he had to do, you know, I realized that what I do is, is just, it's nothing really compared to that. So, you know, I, I get it done, no problem. And obviously, you know, being Connor's one of his main sparring partners and friends, you know, how has the last year, two, three years been seeing his rise from, you know, starting out to becoming champion? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been unbelievable. Um, it's been a great journey. I left my full-time job in September last year. Not actually last year, the year before. Note, did you used to work in the bank? Yeah, I, I used to work. That that's yeah. insane. That's crazy. I, I had all kinds of jobs, to be honest. Like, when I was in school here, I used to uh, wash dishes in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked in the bar while I was in college. Then, obviously, when I graduated, I started working in the bank because I did finance in college. So that was my job, and then I left that in September 2014, and it's been a, it's been a very different uh, year for me since then. Obviously, you know, I did a lot of traveling with Connor, and I've done the Ultimate Fighter, you know. So it's 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 a very enjoyable life when you're able to do what you love, you nice. know. And that that's what I kind of was always trying to. It wasn't easy before, you know. I used to like wake up in the morning had to get a training session in, then go work, then straight to training. I come home and, you know, I maybe have an hour or two to relax and then I have to go straight to bed because if I don't, then I, I'll be really tired the next day and mm -hmm. won't be able to train. And then I also did uh, commentary work for Setanto at the weekends and that was always really, really late. So I'd work, let's say, Saturday from 12 till 4 or 5 in the morning and then I'd be in bed all Sunday and then I'm back to work on Monday. So it was hell of a time, like I was literally just grinding and... Mm -hmm. 
do you have any advice for obviously you know in SPG where you train there's so many amateur fighters who want to go pro but they have full-time jobs do you have any advice for them that you know anyone that might be struggling to kind of juggle everything you just you know you just have to keep grinding you know I, I would definitely try and you know put something some arrangements into place where you have an education or you have a, a trade that you know you know or work experience because you know you never know you have to be realistic you know it's all great you know watching Connor's success and you know he made it work for him but that's one guy out of you know millions you know I don't, I'm not saying you have to give up on your dream but you know dream but also be smart at the mm-hmm. same time you know make sure that you have something there that you can fall back onto if something doesn't work out in your in fighting career mm-hmm. and uh, when did you start martial arts how old were you when you started I started training when I was 21 wow so that's kind of pretty late. You know, I always was a big fan of fighting. Always like like you know fighting sports mm-hmm. like boxing or something. And um, I when I was a kid, I used to beg my mom to let me do boxing, yeah. but she'd always say, "Oh no, no, you can't do it. You'll you'll get your nose broken." And yeah. funny enough, now that I've been <laughs> fighting for a long time, my nose is the only part of my body you that I've never broke. broke. <laughs> I've broken everything: hands, <laughs> arms, ribs, you name it. But I've never broken my nose. And how does your mom feel about your fighting now? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's another thing, you know, uh, with Connor's success, it, it's a lot easier to explain to people mm-hmm. what you do, and it's a lot easier to get the approval from your relatives and, you know, uh, or whatever, whoever is close by or other people for what you do, because all you have to do is just say Connor McGregor and everyone knows yes. him and everyone's seen the success, so they straight away kind of connect the dots mm-hmm. there and, you know, relate you to him and then it's all good then you know whereas back in the day that was not the case that's what I just wanted to to know you know do you can you see it can you see the change in people's perspective you know just the general oh yeah 100% of course I mean you know I mean look I mean they were discussing of having the guy's face on a two euro (laughs) coin I mean come on like I mean it's you know it's I know I mean what else can you say there that that when this happens you know it's you know success is the only word you can describe this absolutely and how has martial arts influenced your life positively well i mean it definitely changed my life and it has given me so many opportunities and i'm healthy but one thing i have to say to people is that because you know they see obviously a lot of videos with connor and they see him doing (coughs) you know a lot of the you know you know you've seen his interviews Mm -hmm. the way he is you know very you know how would, would I even describe it? You know, some people say, you know, he knows how to sell the fight, yeah. basically. Yeah, but it's not about just that. You know, behind all this is there is a lot of hard work. There is there is you know years and years and years of grinding in the cold ass gym. You know, smelly cold gym, really hard work with n- behind closed doors where no one sees that. You know, and and the up and camera generation they they try and they copy this part that they can see now but they shouldn't forget that you have to copy the first part as well Mm -hmm. put in 20 10 years of hard work and then add the rest on top of it and that's when you're going to succeed you know so that's that's what i would say to the youngsters absolutely and moving on from that like obviously training it's full time you know you're mm. as in you're grinding the whole time so we're not in a gym we're in a bit of a different yeah uh, we're in the workman's club in, in dublin so how often do you get to you know we'll socialize do again, you relax the name is appropriate workman's club. <laughs> the workman's club. that's <laughs> what we do you know I mean, we work <laughs> but how often do you get to relax or go out or you know do you have a personal life outside of the gym outside of training training partners or yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, you know, I'm, I meet, you know, my friends, you know, college friends, whatever, and, okay, I, like I said, we don't do camps, but let's say, if we're going to call it that camp, let's say eight weeks before the fight, that's when I sort of wouldn't really go out or do anything, but mm-hmm. if I don't really have a fight lined up, then, yeah, I go out, have a few drinks, I mean, like I said, drink? I mean, what? come on, I'm a <laughs> Russian man living in Ireland, <laughs> Jesus, do I drink? <laughs> I was actually in Leibniz and I didn't think you drank. You have to, you know, you have to, you have to do everything in moderation. You know, if, yeah. if you're sensible, then there's there's no no harm in having a nice hot whiskey before bed, oh. or two <laughs> or three. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. This is uh, our MA Connect uh, quick fire round with Artem Lobov. Um, best thing about being a professional MMA fighter? Uh, you're fit, 
uh, you live a healthy lifestyle, you get to travel the world, and the women love the fighters. <laughs> the <worst>. Yes, you <laughs> do. <laughs> okay, what's the worst thing about being a professional MMA fighter? There is no worst thing. I love it all. I love everything. But if there was one thing I had to say, it's probably the diet. Okay. You have weight to be cost? very strict. Weight cut, yeah. That's okay. a nightmare. Um, your favorite submission? Uh, rear naked choke. That's the most dominant. I'm not really a grappler. You know, I don't... Like I always say, I save the cuddles for the ladies. But if I had to pick one, then <laughs> rear naked choke it would be. Um, what is your most memorable MMA fight? Not of yours, of, of just in MMA in general. What's your favorite MMA fight? Uh, my favorite MMA fight... Jeez, I've got so many. But probably I would have to say... Uh, Fedor Emelianenko versus Randleman. Sweet, very good. And if last one of the quick fire round, your dream fight. It can either be of yourself or someone else. My dream fight hmm, would be probably. Jeez, that's a hard one. <laughs> Let's say again, Fedor. Fedor versus Hicks and Gracie. Oh, sick. Yeah, nice, nice. Sweet, that's Artem Loba for the quick fire end. Thank you.